Hello and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Monocraft Bench and have I got something for you today? Yes, quick inbox review of the Airfix Avro Vulcan B2, the brand new new release Airfix Vulcan that is not the original one and the first thing you can see straight away is oh my god how big is this box I cannot well it it doesn't really fit on my bench honestly never mind underneath the camera <laughs> but there you go there's the box absolutely massive normal brilliant artwork by Adam Tooby I'll leave it at that enough said about the box so brand 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 spanking new tool Vulcan something we've all waited a very long time for um, no doubt there's the standard amount of people going oh I wanted a 148th Vulcan not a 172nd which is fabulous but these people obviously all live in castles and have all the space and disposable income in the world I don't so I'm quite happy with just 70 second scale thank you very much anyway so I can't even stop it here we go first then wings this is the under surfaces for the wings uh, and there's something very very clever going on with the wings in this kit I cut off from the sprue the upper wing surfaces to show you what I mean so in the old kit you had a, a complete, complete fuselage and the wings attached to it as you'd expect like any other kit this one doesn't do that the wing halves also have the fuselage on them and they interlock thus so there is no difficult join along here it was wasn't it and it was difficult and it was only a butt joint so not only was it difficult but they tended to droop and sag and just basically break off over time as well this one well it won't do that because there's actually an, an a massive internal structure as well which we'll look at in a minute so the wing halves and the fuselage are one and the same in this kit and uh, as you can see it's not small there you go beautifully molded uh, very much an airfix kit but one of the better ones in my opinion the surface detail is is consistent and it's fine it's not over the top at all and the finish of the surface of the plastic is is uh, respectably smooth which is something i have criticized quite frequently with modern airfix kits the actual surface of the plastic has a tendency to be quite rough uh, this is not it's it's quite good same goes on with the lowers recess detail everywhere and all that complex under camber and and the changes in the wing section it's all very well replicated and we've also got some raised stiffeners or doublers molded in there as well with rivet detail which is not common on air fix kits but there, there you have some right there moving on to the other stent the other sprues here we have most of these won't fit under the camera so forgive me for moving them around obviously the tail fin is there the control surfaces and some of the these little connect connector pieces that go under the engine you've got two types of fin cap so people who know things about Vulcans will be able to pick the right one for their aircraft also some intake scoops which have got hollowed away leading edges so that for a thinner appearance from the front which is a lovely touch and I wish more manufacturers would do it Good Lord. sheer scale of this thing is is quite impressive here we have some bombs I like what airfix have done with this it's a little bit different something I've not seen before but they've molded the bombs into little squadrons they're all fixed together on brackets so rather than assembling I don't even know how many there are but there's quite a lot of separate bombs they're all sort of fixed together and that's going to help dramatically when it comes to actually fitting them into the bomb bay actually instead of having to align each one and make sure none of them are on the on the slosh these are going to connect in sets then you've got a closed bomb bay door piece and you've got open bomb bay, bomb bay door pieces and over this side you've got the nose one of my nose holes was detached uh, and the internal parts and here's your tail cone um, 
So that's the flight deck floor, refueling probes here uh, and all the various different seats, control columns and things all over this part. Quite a comprehensive looking interior considering how utterly invisible it would be through the actual flight deck windows. That may not be the tail cone, that bit I just said was the tail cone, I think maybe it isn't actually. I'll come back to that. This one has got the tail cone on, silly lady. Jet nozzles, various different parts for that, and then your undercarriage parts over here. Multiple wheels, which are one piece moulded. But detail is, is relatively average. The actual undercarriage legs themselves are quite nice. Bring that up for you. Uh, nice big thick mouldings which is handy because again it's not going to be the lightest model. Another good thing here, again this is just my opinion but these uh, engine parts if I come up tight you can see that moulded in in an inconspicuous area is written onto them which engine they're actually for. So you can take them all off and prep them and do all the stuff without worry worrying about which one goes where once you've finished. Nice touch. There is a small sprue here with mostly it's got your air brakes on it and a bunch of aerials and intake blanks. Another nice touch. I do think air fix are full of that kind of thing just lately they're just come out with a lot of really nice ideas and then finally a separate sprue with the blue steel missile which is a beast look at the size of it uh, I have my bow foot scale here it's not joined together yet but just look at the size of that missile bomb it's the size of a bow foot puts the whole thing into perspective a little bit I think uh, different uh, tail bumps there uh, and there's the intake that goes into the intakes that go into these panels. Again, everything is moulded with that nice smooth surface, and really for Airfix, probably possibly a, a new high water mark for surface detail in terms of panel lines, because I know they are, or well, they can be, a little heavy for some people's taste. And put all those back in the box before I tread on any of it. There we go. Destructions then. This is an A4 booklet. Um, as usual with Airfix, a, a bit of historical information at the beginning. So, here we go then. I won't say too much about this, I'll just leaf through it. Let you have a quick look for yourselves. It's all very self-explanatory. It's the usual kind of shaded sort of CAD style of drawings. Very easy to follow, I find. Are we in the middle? Yes, we are. Here we go. Quite a lot of construction steps dealing with this interior that you will not be able to see. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many hatches you leave open, even if you leave the canopy itself removable that is only going to show you this area all this other stuff the only way you can see it is through this tiny porthole or potentially a little bit from the underneath so the thing i was i called the tail cone is actually a separate internal shell within which you can put your nose weight brilliant idea so there's no chance of it rattling loose and, and ending up flying around inside the fuselage late, at a later date. It's always going to remain inside there. And nominally, 40 grams is what you're going to need, which is quite a bit. There is the option to leave the boarding hatch open. Uh, and there is detail there to be seen, but as I say, realistically, you're not really going to be able to see it. And I don't add into that the fact that the interior of the Vulcan is black. It is just black. There's no colour in there at all. I had the privilege of being able to board XH558 when she was hangered at Lynham, RAF Lynham, 
whilst I was stationed there I went I went over there and spent a very enjoyable few hours in the company of some of the volunteers and they gave me quite a comprehensive tour including the flight deck and a walk around in the Bombay and went up on the wings and all sorts it was fabulous and but yes the interior is just black so yeah so then this is what I'm talking about with this cradle uh, and spa it start we start assembling it here at stage 22 and you have to decide even now whether or not you're going to do a blue steel arm version or not because you're going to have to cut away some of this to allow for that that Bombay modification so we start to build all of that all of the spars and everything just building this structure and this this is also obviously the top of the Bombay until we end up with essentially a skeleton a delta winged skeleton all interlocked together and all glued should be really quite strong same again here if if you're going to do the blue steel arm version you need to cut away a part of the wing another super neat idea here that airfix have come up with do you see those circles that's some indentations that are molded in to give you a guide to chain drill to help you remove these areas that have to go if you're going to use the blue steel what a great idea top marks so they suggest that you uh, it doesn't say what size of drill bit but I'd suggest about a one mil just a drill bit that fits into those holes drill them all out and then they'll pop out nice and easy here we go then affixing the lower wings together including your choice of Bombay if you're going to go with closed ones and then this delta winged backbone can get glued in and once that's all glued into these wing panels it's going to be fabulously strong and you're going to be able to just welly this model around just like a real one without worrying about the wings falling off as you can see here more of that being built up then we build the undercarriage bays the main undercarriage bays on this thing are absolutely huge you can walk around in them um, pop those in And then we move on to the intake areas now here <coughs> more innovation template there for <coughs> excuse my voice camouflage masking so <coughs> paint the whole thing white then use these as a template to mask off the areas that need to stay white uh, in the correct place another brilliant idea you can you could pre-paint these if you wanted and then you'd just be left with having to just touch up the areas that you're probably going to sand during construction so you've got intake faces there, fit covers, intake blanks if you desire. And then pop those into the wing. And the way it all latches together, these intakes kind of form an integral part of the leading edge. So the, the seams are in less tricky places than they were on the old kit. And on the old kit, there was always that big join that you had to get rid of. And it was in a, such a massively visible place, especially when you had the white intakes. And you see here is what I'm talking about. You've got this separate part which has no seam on it and that pushes that ugly, potentially ugly joint back further into the wing. But clearly then you, you will still have to deal with the joint here but that's infinitely easier to do than trying to get an intake seam eradicated properly all the way down. It's a very difficult thing to do. all those exhaust parts that have all got their uh, the, the internal markings are also reproduced on the instructions so if you have snipped everything off you can still identify th the parts in re with regard to the instructions as well there's all these intakes and vents that I was talking about um, and all the pieces that fit into the bottom of the nacelle there in between the nacelles and then you're into the control surfaces of which there are many on a Vulcan and finally the undercarriage again quite um, relatively complex and quite a lot of wheels this was a heavy aircraft it needed a lot of wheels to distribute that weight so you have in fact got eight wheels per main undercarriage bogey in, and I think there's two nose wheels so ten wheels to enjoy painting 
can see here how the Bombay, that structure built up and the detailed look that that gives and the clusters of the bombs all stacked on top of each other much much easier than trying to stack seven bombs onto each pile individually and keep all the alignment right I'm, f I'm absolutely sure that the aftermarket guys will come along with different weapon loads for those that want them at, at a suitable stage and you have your open door option here's your air brakes and then the blue steel bomb right at the end and there you have it quite an involved kit quite a lot of construction certainly a lot more than the original kit had then on to colour and decals so you get as you can see here A2 fold out full colour shiny paper full colour for an all white aircraft slightly counterintuitive but there you go 12 squadron Royal Air Force XM602 this, uh, the knowledge section of this aircraft is preserved now at the Avro Heritage Museum. Nothing really to say about that except it's white all over. Um, slightly satin finish. And then part of the Scampton wing. A camouflage version with the early Hivers roundels and still with the white underside. This one is currently preserved at Newark if you want to go and see it XM594 and then because the decal designer hates us stencils many many stencils and he's done two separate diagrams with decal numbers because the two schemes have different stencil colours you know that the Lovis style stencils that the anti-flash white version have had wouldn't have been used on the camouflaged upper surfaces of the second version for example so you get two separate stencil diagrams for those colour schemes and finally then the actual decal sheet again standard airfix fair which is to say very very competent lovely finish nice glossy finish decals very thin minimal carrier film again and all of those wonderful stencils I hope you can recognize the sarcasm I really don't enjoy putting stencil decals on nice touch here the various aerial dielectric panels which were unpainted fiberglass reproduced there in a darker style color for you to save you the tedious job of masking and spraying them should you desire yes very impressive and well up to the standards that we now expect from airfix i think you'll agree okay again if the two schemes in, included in the kit don't float your boat i'm quite sure that there will be others coming out or if they're not out already Let's leave the shot with the, the wings. So this kit will cost you £60 in the UK, £60. Again, I've seen various comments about the place that this is a rip-off or that it's too expensive. Um, I singularly disagree with that sentiment. This is a large kit. It's a very complicated kit. It's been very, very well thought out. It's beautifully molded. It's well detailed. There is nothing wrong with this. Beautiful decals, really well researched. It's a complete package. Um, to to think to suggest that sixty pounds is a rip off for a model kit of this size, when when you're going to pay twenty for the Beaufort. Or the, my, the, yeah, I, I just disagree. I don't think it's terrible value at all. The the latest Tamiya Phantom kit is £100. Um, an Edward 48th scale World War II fighter is going to cost you £30 nowadays. I don't think £60 is over the top at all. I think, truthfully, they could probably have gotten away with a bit more than that. And bear in mind that, as always, you're going to be able to pick it up cheaper here and there and later on down the line. If if you don't want to pay £60, just wait a bit and I don't doubt you'll be able to pick one up for £50 at some point. I don't think it's over the top. I think it's perfectly acceptable, reasonable value for money. Um, 
and yeah well done airfix well done indeed i think this is a superb kit very very much looking forward to building it this one is going to get built relatively soon and it is going to be done as xh558 uh, and i'll detail that when it comes to it so there you go that's my little, little quick inbox review of the airfix avro vulcan b2 hope you enjoyed it hope it was useful and until the next time look after yourselves look after each other and genesis out